in this moment I realized it wasn't a good idea to practice manuals without proper technique. <coughs> After getting away from that crash with nothing but a cut eyebrow and a sprained wrist, it's no secret that you should look into anything that can go wrong with your bike. Currently I'm checking the handlebars, uh, making sure the tension on the headset's correct and that it's not flexing at all when you try to turn the wheel. Sometimes those can loosen up and that can cause future crashes when you're wheel starts moving independently from your handlebars. Now I'm checking the seat post making sure that's tight before I put it up on the rack because that would not be good for the bike either to have the wheel uh, or have the seat post come off when you have it up on the rack so and trying to find a spot on the bike currently to pick up using the splunt that I'm wearing. So get that up there. Now I decided it would be a good idea to give the bike a good lubrication job since I hadn't done it since I bought the bike back in January. So what I'm doing is I'm arranging the master link in a reference spot so that I can uh, start liberally applying drops to each link of the chain. And uh, it usually takes about one or two dro drops per link and I usually like to take a couple of uh, laps just to make sure I get every link on the chain because if you don't lubricate one link and that wears down that will be right where the chain will break so you usually want to make sure you get a drop or two on every single link of the chain just so that <clears throat> is less likely to happen and uh, yeah you just keep going down I, uh, I fixate my eyes on the link that I left off on when I move the crank set just so that I can keep up with where I'm at on the chain as far as lubricating it. Once that's done you can now move on to shifting through the gears just to make sure those work after taking a spill like that. Now what I'm doing is uh, shifting through the gears just to make sure the gears work. So uh, starting at where I left off on after the accident, I'm just going to go up through the to the bigger or down the smaller cogs first, and that should be the final gear. Now back up the crank or back up the cassette. That had some. Uh, these two had some jumpiness to them and uh, just general instability so I made the adjustment at the barrel connector at the front right there and after that as far as I recall it w worked fine if I can't get that adjusted correctly I would suspect a bent derailleur hanger but since that adjustment got working correctly then it's uh the derailleur hanger should be fine, but eventually I, I might get a tool just so that I can check the derailleur hanger alignment if I suspect that mine is bent. So just going through the crank set in the front there just to make sure that's working correctly alongside the shifting in the back. That rub that you hear that's rubbing the front cage for some reason. So I might have to see if I can adjust the limits on that sometime to make sure that doesn't rub, but it's not a big deal for me because I rarely ever use that third uh, cog. So I'm going back down. Do you believe that I test out the grand gear just to make sure that works? Another quick trip up the set. And 
back down there. Here comes a granny gear. Yep, that still works. Look at how slow that wheel's going. That's why the having the granny gear is nice. That concludes today's video. I'll be able to uh, ease back into riding soon here. It probably when the weather starts warming up for good for the summer, should be able to start again. But until then, see you guys later.